Hello, this is Jason Hammond, the Science Outreach Manager from the Children's Museum Houston, here to do a fun science experiment with you, brought to you by the Samuels Family Foundation, WT and Louise J. Moran Foundation. Let's get to experimenting. Okay, so today we're gonna make a food web, and food webs are really fun because it's a really easy way to understand some very, very simple concepts about uh, what different animals eat, plants, fungus as well, and uh, what prey and predator means. Uh, what we're gonna do is, if you can, go ahead and download all these different food web cards. Uh, there's about, uh, let's say, uh, 56, something like that, and there's all kinds of different um, species, different organisms within these food web cards. You're gonna find mushrooms, you're gonna find plants, you're gonna find insects, you're gonna find amphibians and reptiles and mammals, and it's really good because every single species you find here is from the Houston, Texas area. A lot of it is from Houston. You're also gonna find a sun card. The sun card is really important because the sun is the source of all life on this planet outside of water, all right? So when you're doing your food web, the sun will be the first person to hold onto the yarn, and then the sun will throw the yarn to someone else. That's a plant. I'm giving a little bit away here. And then from there, you'll continue on with your food web. But let's go ahead and talk about different organisms for a moment. We're really just gonna talk about animals at this point because animals are really the only organism that eats in different ways. So you have carnivores, you have herbivores, and you have omnivores. So carnivores are animals that only eat meat. So think about a wolf. What a wolf would eat? Think about possibly what a tiger would eat. All those different kinds of animals. You would probably categorize them as carnivores. Now you have herbivores. Herbivores are animals that only eat plants. So now we're talking deers, animals like that. So when you're looking through all the food web cards, think about which animals might only eat plants. Now here's the thing that you're gonna have to start to understand. Many of the herbivores are the prey of predators that are carnivores. So predators are animals that eat other animals and prey is the animal that is eaten. You don't really consider plants or mushrooms or anything else like that as prey. It's only an animal with an animal thing. Now you have omnivores. Omnivores are animals that eat both plants and animals. And the most common ar ar omnivore that you probably know about are humans. We eat both plants and animals. So we have the, the teeth structure, the flat teeth in the back to grind, and the sharp teeth in the front to cut so that we can eat both. Now, we do it a little differently than animals in the wild. We, we cook our meat and we cook our vegetables. We don't just eat them in their raw state but we are designed to do that as well, especially our past, 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 past ancestors. Now again, just to remind you, you always wanna stretch your food webs with the sun because without the sun and without us being at the perfect distance from the sun, we would not have life on this planet. Water helps too. Every creature, organism that is living needs water. But when it comes to a food web, we're more talking about the intricacies between different species. Used to be food webs were like linear. They would say this animal eats this and this animal eats this and this animal eats this and da 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 da. They are no longer like that. Food webs now are just that, a web. So when you take a look at a food web, you're gonna see it's crisscrossing and going from one person to the next and back to the same person and going all around. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at a food web right now so you can see what one looks like. So when you're doing your food web, Whoever has the sun card is the person to start with the yarn in their hand. What they'll basically do then is say, hey, what needs the sun for food? And technically speaking, it should be plants, but everything needs the sun. So if it happens that no one got a plant card, you can just throw it to whoever's like, yeah, I want the yarn first, yay. So, because maybe that deer ate a plant just before, it's all good. So from there then you'd say like, oh, who eats me? And all these people will raise their hand, you choose who you're gonna throw it to, and you throw it to that person. And you just keep doing that over and over and over again until you get that nice 
intricate looking web. Okay, so you still have to do a food web if you have a bunch of different people with you, but if, say, you're home alone on a rainy day, does that mean you can't do a food web? No, it doesn't. What you would do then is probably just put your food web cards down on your floor. You would probably cut your yarn up a little bit, and then you would put yarn pieces between each one so that you can say, okay, the sun would go to this plant, let's say, and this animal would eat this plant, and this animal would eat this animal, and this animal would also eat this plant because it's an omnivore, but then this plant goes back to the sun, and then the sun goes to the mushroom, and then the mushroom is eaten by this animal, and then there's a domestic cat, and a domestic dog, and a lizard, and a butterfly, and all that stuff, and you can make your own very intricate food web and show it off to your family and friends. So don't worry about it if you can't get a large gathering of people, you can still make a food web. So this is always fun to do with family and friends, but it's also a lot of fun to do alone, and you can learn a lot just by yourself as well. Thanks for joining us for this really fun science experiment. We hope to see you soon, and we hope you keep on doing science.